Hey, fool, you ready for another beating? You should have never came back. Well, Philadelphia, you've always got Philly cheesesteaks. Okay, so the boys win a big one. And now are officially back in this playoff hunt. They are still alive, folks. They're still alive. I know the odds are thin, but we're still alive. And if everything could go good one more day, we'd be right in this. So here we go again, getting our hopes up. I'm... Um, I'm, I'm kind of taken back a little by today because Detroit couldn't get it done in Detroit. They lost again in regulation and the Capitals' friends were up two to nothing in their game by two goals by Ovechkin and Hurricane stormed back and win that 3-2 in regulation. So it's a good night of hockey for Sabres fans with the Flyers losing in regulation too, of course. So let's look at the numbers and folks, these numbers are brought to you by Rome the sweet but intense little bison. Here we go. Okay, shots on goal, 34-19. And yes, that tells you how the game went, folks. If, in case you're wondering, haven't seen the game, yes, this is how the game went. The Flyers on the faceoff, 69%. The Sabres, 31. No a power plays for the Sabres. And we killed off two penalties. Hits in the game, 43 for the Flyers, 35 for the Sabres. At one point, we were being out hit 25 to 10, and we had like four shots of goal when they had like 22 or 23. It was just crazy what was going on at one point. We, they had uh, 16 blocks apiece, actually. Flyers, though, had nine giveaways. We had two. But they had nine takeaways. We had three shots and goal per period. First period, 10-4 Flyers. Second period, 13-8 Flyers. Third period, 11-7 Flyers for that 34-19 total. As you can see, was not an easy game. UPL was stellar in nets tonight. Scoring. Tage opens it up, his 28th of the season from Paterka and Tuck at 10-01. Sabres get that important first goal after one. We go to the second, Cates from Tippett and York at 9-07, tie at 1-1. At the uh, 907 mark, if I didn't say that, and Darlene gets his 19th of the season from Thompson, and Tuck Thompson was really, really, I thought, in, in form tonight. At 1451, makes it two to one Sabres, and then Quinn. Uh, it was kind of the Quinn night, though, in this game. Quinn from Benson and Power. At 1954, really kind of puts you, would figure the nail in the coffin, but we knew the Flyers were gonna come out strong in the third. We go to the third. Tip it from Sanheim and Lawton at 9.19. Pull it at that point within a goal, 3-2. And then Quinn again from Benson and Cousins makes it 4-2 at 13.59. Basically the dagger there. But even then, the Flyers just were relentless in this game. So yes, we won this game because of goaltending and timely goal scoring by Quinn. Kind of wonder where our season would be if we would have had Quinn all year. I do wonder. But you know what? Every team has injuries, so it's not an excuse. Just curious. You know, if this kid was next year to stay healthy. What are we looking at? He's going to be a year older, a year stronger. And uh, it should be really fun to see how this team, what they're going to become. So, so far the Sabres in games that they really, really had to win against the teams are trying to catch a two for two. They've beaten Washington and they've beaten these guys. And um, this, as, as we know, was a must win if we had any hopes of just sticking around. So let's look at the standings. Okay, the Flyers, I'm only cutting, I'm not showing uh, Tampa no more, there's no point, they're in. So Philadelphia, as you see, has that last spot right now, 83 points, the Capitals 82 points, the Red Wings 82 points, the Penguins all of a sudden back into it, 81 points. And there's the Sabres with 79 and the Devils hanging to dear life with 76 at this point. But keep in mind, we still have a game against the Capitals and a game against the Red Wings. 
So this can change. It really can. And the flyers right now are fluttering. They are completely fluttering right now. They're collapsing. Let's face it. That's what's happening in Philly. So if Washington and um, if Washington and Detroit can just somehow just float around 500 at best the rest of the year, the Sabres have a shot. As do the Penguins, of course. Let's not forget the Penguins. So there is, um, there's a lot of good news tonight. And I'm going to take this. Guys, I'm going to upload this video just so you know. Because I'm doing this video. I'll tell you the time right now. I'm doing this video late. Because I was downstairs doing something. And it's 11.26. So I'm going to try to upload this. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to try to upload this to you guys as soon as I can. And I'm going to not, I'm going to put it in um, a low resolution, okay? So you'll forgive me for that, but I want to get the video up as soon as I can tonight. So I'll keep it as simple as possible, my thoughts of the game. So UPL was stellar, especially the first half of this game. He stopped everything they threw at him. He made some really good saves. It wasn't just they were throwing low chances at him. They were throwing high risk chances. You know, there was high danger chances he was stopping. It was a good game by him. And Quinn... Also, uh, when we needed that goal, it seemed like he was the guy that was going to get it tonight. So it was just that kind of night. It was, uh, you could tell that the boys were in tune. Even Granado did the right thing. When, when the Flyers were all over us, you guys remember when they tied it up and Granado took that early timeout. I was like, finally, he does something that makes sense, this coach. He called the timeout and folks, we just, that was it. I mean, really the game, they were still in it, but you got to remember the Flyers, not really, but did have a lot more to play for tonight than we did, kind of, because they're, they don't want to blow this. They, they've been in a playoff spot all year, it seems, right? I mean, they've been there all year and they're choking it away right now. And the last thing they needed was to come into Buffalo and lose and let a, a, a young Sabres team maybe have the thought that they could still get in. As a, you know, it's starting to go like this all of a sudden. So we'll see how this pans out down the stretch. If the Sabres can win in Detroit in regulation, we have a race. We have a race right to the end. I'll tell you right now, we have a race. Right to the end. Because if you go look at some of the games, some of these teams have to play... You know, if the Sabres can get hot, you just never know, guys. You never know, is what I'll say. I know the odds are thin, but I'll take them. It's better than being out right now and saying, okay, season's done. I, you know, I like at least the games are meaningful. You know, these games are still meaningful, no matter what way you cut it. Because if we beat Detroit, we'll be right there. Right there. So a lot of things can change very soon. Yes, we have to get a little lucky. Absolutely. And we did tonight. Let's face it, we did tonight. So tomorrow, I'm just looking at any game that has implications for us. Philadelphia is at Columbus. They're playing a back-to-back, -back, guys, and they expended a lot of energy in this game. A ton of hits. They might not be, they might not have it tomorrow. They might not. And you got to remember, Tortorella's old team might be up to playing against them, you know? So, you know, these other games, Tampa at Pittsburgh, we hope we got to go for Tampa. Philly at Columbus, we hope Columbus pulls it out. Uh, Nashville's at New York Islanders. A lot can happen in our way tomorrow. So let's hope tomorrow, if all these three could lose in regulation tomorrow, wouldn't that be something? All of a sudden, the doors open for this Detroit game to mean so much more than it would have just a week ago. Because that's the uh, matinee game the day after tomorrow is Buffalo at Detroit. And there is my season right there in my books. As a Buffalo fan, that's my season right there. The Sabres got to win that game. If for any reason, to wreck Detroit's chances. To wreck their chances. I mean, we want to be that type of team that we have a killer instinct, even if we're not in. Even if we've had a crap season. Even if we've let down the fans. I want to see a killer instinct to close out the season. We'll see. Right now, you know, it's, I, I get it. It's still a very discouraging season. We're back to two games over again. We haven't been three games over 500 the entire season. So we'll see if we can do it in Detroit. And if we can do it in Detroit, then what? Then what? 
all of a sudden, these games become monstrous to close out the season. So don't throw in the towel yet, guys. No, don't throw in the towel yet. Not yet. We got to see what happens tomorrow. And if that can go our way, or at least partially our way, I would hope that, uh, you know, I, I, as long as there's no three-point games, you know, we don't want, well, the, uh, the Islanders, we want them to lose to Nashville, which there's a good chance they could. Because Patrick was trying to bring in another system and they're still getting used to it. We need Philly to lose outright also in Columbus. And where's the other one? Tampa. Okay, so yeah, we need all these three teams to lose. Uh, no three-point games. I, I mean, I'm not worried about three-point games, but I am because I don't want e e these teams finishing tied in regulation. If it could happen our way tomorrow. Because if it could, this changes really quick. Because we're coming down the stretch run now. And if the Flyers lose, we'll be four points out of a playoff spot with a game in hand on them. If all these teams lose. Four points with a game in hand. We'll have a game in hand. So think about it, guys. You know, and if the Capitals can lose, there's no games in hand there. We'll be one point behind the Capitals. And we would be... Uh, three points behind, uh, we would, there's just so much that can happen in the next two days. So let's see if it goes our way and then we'll, we'll take it from there. So guys, I'm going to let my little friend come here. Come say goodnight. I'm going to say goodnight. I'm going to let Rosie say goodnight. And we're going to call it uh, a happy night for Sabres fans because it is. We're going to take this. We're going to just appreciate that we're still alive and see what can happen in the, uh, in the upcoming games. Because if the next two days go our way, wouldn't that be something? If we all of a sudden we're just, oh my God, we're two points out now. It could happen, but we have to have four games go our way, okay? If these three games can go our way tomorrow, we just gotta beat Detroit. And if Detroit beat us, then that's as good as we were this year, folks. That's it. That's as good as we were. And there's nothing else we can say but that. All right, guys, done for the night. I got to get this up to you. It's late. It's going to be a late video. I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to put a rush on it. I'm going to upload it real quick, and I'll see you soon. Have a good one.